Today we're watching three GRC professionals, an aspiring, a mid-level, and a senior answer the same challenging interview question. I'm going to break down what separates a good answer from a great one. Hey, I'm Dr. Gerald Dozier. I've worked in cybersecurity GRC for 20 years and helped thousands of professionals through Simply Cyber Academy level up their careers. How do you think you're gonna do on the question? Well, let's check it out. This one tests prioritization skills, risk management thinking, and stakeholder communication. Your organization has identified 50 high-risk findings from a recent security assessment. You have budget and resources to address only 15 of them this quarter. Walk me through your process for prioritizing which risks to remediate first. Now this is a real world scenario that every GRC professional will face at some point in their career. Let's see how our aspiring analyst who's looking to get a job as a GRC analyst for the first time approaches this question. So I would look at all of those, should say failures or hits on that audit um, and try to categorize them. Maybe even see if I can include some of those others in the 15. Um, what products are again it would come down to applications that we're going to be utilizing sometimes their applications have more than just one uh, fix they may have different products encompassed in the one that will be able to help us with some of those others so really looking at what those risks are which one of those are critical are high vulnerability be it um where there may be the red threat, red risk, and then go from there. Which ones are the highest? Put those into whatever product platform we have already. If we're getting new products, what other ones we can add? And then also seeing of the remaining, you know, 35, if I can add those to some of the, the ones that are high risk too you know, include them in that under the umbrella. All right, so she did a great job here. She did talk about um, prioritizing based on how critical the risks are. So I definitely understand that she's trying to identify which one give the biggest uh, risk reduction for the organization. Another thing she said that I really appreciated was, is there any opportunity for, you know, fixing one problem or addressing one risk that would actually also address another vulnerability that would be outside, you know, kind of getting more than that 15 uh, just by virtue of how she selected it. Uh, she did mention, you know, a red risk. Now I know what she's talking about. She's referring to a, a you know, a classic risk matrix of likelihood and impact going from green, yellow to red. She didn't use kind of likelihood and impact. She just kind of mentioned risk, which is an opportunity uh, for her to kind of point out how she's coming up with these criticalities. Um, you know, obviously, she kind of at, at, at a large scale talked about uh, the criticality, but she didn't really mention, you know, internet facing versus internal and, you know, the value of different vulnerabilities in different areas of the organization. Now, she did mention which applications and which business um, would, would have liked to have seen her kind of go in a little bit more on, you know, if a business impact analysis had been done, like how, how do you know which applications are going to be mission critical and stuff like that. Uh, great opportunity, but, you know, fine answer. She definitely is, uh, you know, in the right um, vein of, of what we'd want to be hearing here around prioritizing the higher risk ones to the organization. Okay, now let's see someone who's got about three years of GRC experience in the healthcare industry and how he handles this question. The way that I would walk through this, and then I'm gonna close my eyes because I'm, look, I'm thinking about a, a spreadsheet or my desk or a dashboard. The first thing I wanna understand is not just- I appreciate that he said, like he's closing his eyes in the interview, but I appreciate that he explains why he's doing it. Honestly, you can do whatever you want in the interview that's within socially acceptable parameters, but if he just answered this question completely with his eyes closed, and hadn't prefaced it with why, I, I, I probably would be like, what is going on? So I appreciate that he did that. Which, and I take it they're all critical. There's 50, 50 critical findings. High risk, okay. Um, obviously I wanna know, you know, what, what is the likelihood that this finding is gonna impact our business operations? And then I want to know, well, if it does impact, what is, you know, what is that impact going to look like? Is it going to slow things down? So we're already seeing right away, like, again, I didn't know he was going to do this, but the 
first uh, analyst, the one who's aspiring, she, she didn't really. She mentioned risk, but she didn't really talk about likelihood and impact. Going deeper into that, and and Jesse here immediately, it's the first thing he's saying is like, all right, I got to understand what the likelihood is, and then if that happens, what is the actual impact? Kind of unpacking what the risk really is of these vulnerabilities. Is it gonna? Is it going to be a full compromise? What I really want to know is, um, so I'm thinking, I want to remediate the 15 that are gonna have the most impact to my organization. There's 50 compliance findings. How many of those are systems that we don't use on a regular basis that may be the high risk? The likelihood that it gets compromised just isn't high enough. So I wanna understand who has the highest. Okay, so another thing you just did there that I really like is um, he, he's actually giving tangible examples of what a lower impact would be, uh, talking about an internal system uh, to the environment that isn't as mission critical as other ones. So very, very heady, you know, insightful and, and 100% on, you know, on track with what you would be doing. Likelihood, where, where is the greatest impact going to be within our environment? So Jesse did great there. He did dig into the, like how we understand risk and likelihood and impact. I appreciated hearing those terms. Uh, he did talk about, you know, mission criticality and understanding that like an, maybe an internal system that isn't really important to the business is a far less important um, area of focus than maybe something a bit more mission critical. You know, as far as uh, constructive criticism, uh, his answer was really short. He did he did answer the question, so you can't fault him on that. But it would have been nice to see him go a little bit deeper in understanding. So he talked about, um, you know, there's only 15 that we have budget and resources for. Uh, maybe understanding, like, is the IT team or the application team going to be able to have uh, you know, a better understanding and ability to quickly uh, address some of these higher issues uh, than than some of the lower ones. Are any of these issues, um, you know, blaring big problems that need to be addressed immediately? Is there any economies of scale very similar to the first candidate and how she answered that? Can we take advantage of closing out these uh, vulnerabilities, but by virtue of closing those out, we actually end up uh, closing out some additional ones that, you know, go beyond uh, that 15. So great answer. Uh, you know, just would like to see a little bit of uh, meat on the bone there. Okay. Now let's see what a senior leader's approach is to this question. The first thing to do is to really understand whether the criticality, you agree with the criticality. So when we talk about, um, hi. Wow. Okay. So right off the rip, she just said something that is brilliant and truly an understanding of the realities of GRC. So she immediately questions whether or not these 50 vulnerabilities are all truly high vulnerabilities. So a lot of vulnerability scanners will have a score for a vulnerability, but the vulnerability scanners don't understand your environment. They don't know if it's um, you know, a sensitive system, a high value system. They don't know if it's a false positive or whatever. So right off the rip, Erica is saying, let's actually confirm our understanding of what these risks actually, or what these vulnerabilities actually are. Risk findings, some of these could be false positives. So the first thing you, you wanna do is take a fine tooth comb. There is a bit of manual um, objective justification that goes with like appropriate risk tiering. So is it something that maybe the system is quantifying as a high risk finding that you can lower to a medium risk finding or a low risk finding or a false positive or sometimes even duplicatives, right? It's popping up three different times, but it's really one thing you need to remediate. So the first thing would be taking that fine tooth comb through it, making sure things are appropriately risk tiered. Make sure you document your justification for every single one of these within appropriate risk tickets and whatever ticketing system you're utilizing. And then from there, you need to, um, accept the risk for which you do not want to mitigate and you need to document that if you need additional sign off from a control owner a business owner system owner make sure that you have that and then you need to start figuring out um, how you're going to navigate the criticality of the findings that you're going to be remediating it's always tough because there's limited resources limited people money to be able to mitigate everything. So it's more of taking your risk-based approach and then making sure that you're, um, you're you're aware of the, you know, kind of the impact of what you're leaving unremediated. Wow, okay, so Erica straight crushed it, okay? So not only did she talk about validating the actual findings themselves, but then she talked about kind of having to coordinate with stakeholders, system owners, application owners, business owners to own that risk and 
documenting it, which is critical uh, for the next person that comes through, external audit, internal audit. If there is a breach because of some of these vulnerabilities that were not addressed, you have uh, a visibility and accountability on why it was there from a liability perspective. And her uh, talking about actually documenting and, and understanding what is your actual risk exposure after you address the 15 that you're going to address in the first place. This is a phenomenal answer and should be studied as a perfect answer to this question. The ability to prioritize risk isn't something you're born with, of course, it's a skill you develop. And that's exactly what we focus on at Simply Cyber Academy. Interestingly enough, our GRC courses teach you not just frameworks and compliance requirements, but how to think strategically and communicate like the senior professionals that you just watched. And courses start as little as $35 with lifetime access. No subscription. We don't do that over there. So check out Simply Cyber at the link below. Drop a comment telling me what interview question you want analyzed by the talent next. I'm Jerry from Simply Cyber. Till next time, stay secure.